So warm welcome to an audience with the president. My name's Alf Hurst. I'm going to be your chairperson for the next hour. And my first duty is to hand over to the president of the Spiritualist National Union, Minister David Bruton, who will introduce you to the session and his guest, David. Thank you, Alf. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to welcome you here for our regular Monday night appointment discussing spiritualism. It's the 1st of March. Here in the UK, lockdown continues, but we are certainly seeing the first signs of spring and that holds, I'm sure, hope for all of us uh, that this year is going to be a little better. Despite my protestations that I wasn't old enough, I had my vaccine jab on Saturday, so I'm now officially vaccinated. I think they got my age totally wrong, but never mind. That's something for another discussion. So... Tonight's subject, ladies and gentlemen, is bringing spirituality into mediumship. And my guest uh, is a very great friend, uh, a gentleman who is a respected course organizer and tutor at the Arthur Finlay College, who also teaches internationally, sharing his philosophy, his philosophy and his view of life and spiritualism with many, many people. It gives me great pleasure to welcome to his first visit for audience with the president. I don't know how we've got through to season three without having him with us before, but here it's good to welcome him. So I'd like to welcome Minister Colin Bates. Welcome Colin and thank you so much for joining us. Well, do you know, it's an absolute pleasure and how wonderful to see so many people that I know. And especially during this time where we're not able to physically come together how wonderful it is that in this moment of technology that we are all interconnected. And you know, when I say we are all interconnected, we are all interconnected, not just through this technology you see, but from the power, the creative force in whom we move and have our very being. So when I was asked to speak about um, the spirituality aspect of mediumship, I was delighted because having taught really at the college for over, well, it is over 25 years now. And one of the most popular weeks that we have is mediumship and spiritual development. It's an aspect that's very close to my heart. And for me, the two are intrinsically a part of each other. Although we may debate and say that one is a practice, one is a way of life. Actually, for me, there is, there is a, a symbiosis that comes together within the two. Because when we look at the power of God, the power of creation, the greatest causation of the universe is love. And together with love, we have compassion. And with love and compassion, we have understanding for another person's need. Well, that is the ancient gift of mediumship. Although I do have to say that in the modern world, mediumship today, in my opinion, has moved its goalposts incredibly to what it once was. It really was considered to be uh, one of the greatest sacred acts within uh, the ancient world. And also for many years within more of the modern times, but mediumship today, in my opinion, has changed almost beyond recognition. And the word demand has started to creep uh, into the sacred act. And, you know, the needs of people are changing. And so as a medium, we also have to be adaptable to what is happening within our world. And as we are becoming more and more adaptable within the world, it is for me very much about the unification, the union of coming together. And you know, that is regardless of color or creed or religious belief. You know, we're coming into a time uh, more and more where mankind is starting to look at that which binds us, that which keeps us together rather than that which separates us. And my goodness, have we not seen that within this pandemic? that in one way it, it has brought 
mankind into this sense of stopping and really thinking about life and the journey of life and the unfolding process of life. And I know you see beyond any question that there will be and is starting to be this great resurgence of the spirit where people are needing to know that their loved ones still exist, that they are still, uh, I am I and you are you. Although we are no longer within the physical world, we are still connected. And that the realms of light and mind that we call the spirit world is still intrinsically a part of you and I. And this is really where the spirit and the spiritual aspects for me come into being. Because many people within our world are seeking and searching seeking to find their own place within the world, seeking to embrace their own purpose within the world and, and seeking to really to em embrace the naturalness of the world and of the universe itself. And for me, that is the spirit part. That is that which binds us, that which brings us together. And I have the privilege um, in, within my work to work in so many different countries and how wonderful it is to see that now the people that are being born into the world, that the new generations that are coming forward are demanding to find their own freedom within it, that they're no longer restricted by what we've been told to believe that this is how life is, this is how death is, this is how heaven is, this is how hell is. And that really those restrictions are becoming less and less within the new generations being born. And I find that really heartening because what we're seeking to unfold and to embrace is the naturalness of life. And that's really what we teach within mediumship, that this is about you. This is about your individual journey, the uniqueness of who you are and how we interconnect with the universe and the great creative force, the God force. And that within the uniqueness, we're finding our way together. And really that's how I often see the college because when we consider how many people over so many years have come and, and, and really been seeking to find themselves, and, and yes, you could say, well, it's about mediumship and it's about developing the powers of communication, but it's only a small part, you see, of this greater journey. And that really the greatest gift we can give to another is that they begin to find themselves that they begin to recognize within themselves that the great spirit exists as a part of their very being. And many people you see may touch upon mediumship and then go and live within the physical life and that's enough. You know, very few people follow it totally as a way of life because I see it more and more you see that we are the nurturers. We bring people into this sense of really unfolding within themselves their own spirit and their connection to the power of all life and then through discovering this this wonderful this wonderful ability that they have which is centered around love and compassion they discover the power to heal and you see the major journey of life is transformative it's the transformation of self. It's the healing of self. It's the spiritualization of self and the realization that we are part of this one great stupendous whole that is the power of creation. And you see, once you embrace that, you know, within its simplicity, all of a sudden you begin to live you begin to realize that within each one of us, there is an unlimited power. There is an unlimited supply of this wonderful light, this wonderful compassion, this wonderful healing ability. And above all, this ability to communicate with each other, to understand each other, to be there, you see, for each other. 
And within that, you see the greatest message of, of the spirit is brought forward. It is discussed, you see, in its most natural form. Mediumship is about life, you see. It's not about death. There is no death anyway. And so really we are a living religion of life. And part of that process is finding our pathway individually to our own truth. I do believe that. So can I ask you, Colin? Yes. Where, where did it begin with you? Where did your journey begin? Where, when did you first become aware that you had this wonderful God-given gift? Well, my mother dragged me to a spiritualist church when I was 16. <laughs> right. No, really. And I was their first punk rocker. And I sat there and then I became transfixed and everybody was looking at me, but I was with my mum, so it didn't matter. Yeah. And then, you know, I stayed ever since. But my real first beginnings of, of the spirit, when I was three years old, I contracted meningitis and I was very, very seriously ill for over a year in hospital. Yes. And when they came to take me to hospital, I started having these visions and seeing all these people in the wallpaper and all these faces. And, and my mother reminded me many years later that I always used to go to the bottom of the garden to see the people who lived at the bottom of the garden. And that I constantly walked around with animals all around me that didn't exist physically. So this sense of, of belief within the power of the spirit came to me at a very, very early age, but I've always been drawn to the religious aspect. And, and I studied and, and for many years within the Church of England and, and went for many, many years until, until my teen years and, and still retained that love of, of the presence that is created within prayer. Yes. And, and within thought. So really, it, it, it's been an incredible journey. And then from the age of 16, and then within my 20s, I was taken to the college. Yes. And then as soon as I got to the college, I was nurtured, I was loved. And even to the point of people who were at the college at that time in 1989, offering to pay for my education, so that I could then study and then work, work, you know, within, within the sense of the mediumship. And this, I believe, is, is something that touches uh, so many people's lives because we have these events, these moments, these awakenings to, the, to our own individual truth. And these events, they set us on this pathway of, of seeking and searching to really find our own answers. Yes. So who was your first mentor at the college then? Uh, well, it was Gordon Higginson. I was very fortunate. You, you started with one of the best, undoubtedly. I, I did, yes, for the last three years. And I studied with Ursula Roberts, yes. uh, Mavis Batilla, Glyn Edwards, Leonard Young, uh, an extraordinary lady who only recently passed to the spirit. The most wonderful, wonderful lady um, who I always remember, Mallory Stendhal. Oh, yes, of course, Mallory, yes. And uh, she was extraordinary. And so it was an introduction to something that really became a way of life. Yes. But this, this belief in, in our own sense of finding ourselves within it yes. is, for me, one of the most important because it is a personal journey. And it actually, it is a, a personal reflection within it, but the power is universal. Yes. And that's why it's so extraordinary, you see, because this wonderful term non-local uh, reality, which brings everyone together within the same moment is extraordinary. And so in one way, what we have been able to create is a way of everyone coming together and then beginning to realize the limitless potential of who they are. And that, that whatever you do in life, you must not limit the limitless potential because the power of thought is the power of life. And that we are starting now more and more 
as, as we investigate this in, the, in, incredible reality, that we have this ability to be able to come together, to be free together, to send our thoughts, our prayers, our healing, but also as well, that once we get past this physical mind that really restricts the reality of the spirit, because you see, we all live in our mind. But once you go beyond that, then the subtle realms of the psyche and the spirit begin to manifest. And then we begin to feel and experience the spirit world. And, and what is so wonderful, you see, is no two people will ever do it in quite the same way. And, and so what I always say to, to, to people who come and, and, and who are seeking, first of all, just begin to recognize that you are as much a part of that creative force as you can ever be, that there is a spark of the divine essence within you and I that interconnects you, me, mankind and the spirit world and that the spirit world itself is within the heart of God's love. It's a facet of the creative force. And so the first and foremost part of that really is learning how to find and create the stillness so that we are then able to listen. You know, we speak of meditation and, and prayer. You know, in prayer, we speak to God. In meditation, we experience God. We experience the presence and we find our answers. The spirit world is always there. It lives in its own constant presence. It is only ourselves, you see, that is separate from it. And so when we move into that moment of blessing, that moment of being, that moment of focusing in the way that is, is to prayer, is to invoke the sacredness of the spirit, what happens, you see, is that the physical mind moves into a quietness, but the consciousness rises. And as the consciousness rises, we then become aware, you see, in another way. And for me, what is important is the duality between the two. And whatever I'm doing, whether it's teaching or, or, or you know, uh, working in any form, I always have my 10 minutes with the power. Yes. I always create that time to just breathe. And as, as I breathe, we then recognize, you know, the quality, the creative force within the breath. If you stand outside and, and you know, you feel the stirrings of the spring and, and, and you know, the, the power of God is the power that can mark the fall of a single bird and the raising of a single blade of grass. So, so it, it is everywhere. It is you, it is I, it is the whole world. But sometimes it is the physical mind that takes us away from its presence. Sometimes it's, you know, what is happening to us within our lives, within our emotions um, that, that moves us away from that. And so part of what we do, and this is where spiritualism really, uh, for me, saved my life through a very difficult time. It brings us into the realization of the compassion and of the love and that we all have a place within the heart of God and that we all have this ability to look after each other, to love each other, to heal each other, to be the strength of each other, because that's what it is within its most simplistic form. But when we speak of the transformation of life, the transformative power of the spirit, that sometimes is not so easy because many people come into an awareness of the spirit through uh, events that happen within their lives, through times of real high emotion and difficulties. And as we move into the awareness of the spirit, we also move into a time of transforming and healing and becoming. And that really is for me where the spiritual aspects also come into being. Because sometimes it's about changing lives. 
Sometimes it's about realizing, you know, you'd be amazed how many people come and because they've been told in life, they're not good enough. They believe they're not good enough. Who am I? And I just turn around and say, well, my dear one, who are you not? Always remember, if you're good enough for God, then you're jolly well good enough for anyone. And so the facilitating of this transformative journey is really where the love and the healing and the presence of the creator comes into being. Because although, you know, we may not be somebody who is easily drawn to the quiet, we may not be somebody who is a natural meditator, but we can always find a way to create that, that quietness, that, that stillness. And, and really that's what we teach. That's at the heart of the spiritual and mediumistic development because it's recognizing not only these qualities that we all have, but how to empower them. And, you know, really the healing aspect is for me the pillar of everything that we do. Yes. And, and more and more you see this is coming to the fore. And especially within these difficult times. And so within communication itself, there is a great healing. Yes. As the medium, we are the mediator between heaven and earth. We bring the two worlds together. But it is through the compassion that we really begin to create the healing. And the greatest healing you see is created through the heart, but it's also through the voice. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, so when, we, when we connect in that way, you see, then, then all of a sudden we are uplifted because we're transported by the energy, by the power itself. And that really is the sacred act of, of mediumship. And as I said, um, when we first started to speak, you know what, you also have to look at the needs of today you know, and those needs are not just within the sense of knowing that grandma is still there and with you. It's actually about life. Yes. And it's about survival within life. And it's about knowing that there is hope. Because you see, that is one thing that the, the creative force, you see, and the spirit will always leave someone with is hope. Yes, and that's the power to heal. That's really the power to love. It's an incredible aspect um, that comes together. Colin, can I ask you, um, yes. what, what's your opinion? Do you think that commercial, commercialism per se is damaging mediumship? Well, I mean, there's a very, very good question. I mean, to a degree, I've had to become involved in commercialism myself. I've been selling myself to the colonies. I mean, isn't that an extraordinary thing to do? And I think what, what we have to look at here is what motivates the individual and what is within the heart. And this is why you see there are many people who even have uh, abilities within the spirit but have no sense of God and, and certainly have no intention of, of unfolding those qualities within themselves and that their only interest is the money. Yes. Because it will exist and it does exist in every avenue of life. And it will never lead, in my opinion, to the fullest of blossoming. Mm -hmm. And it will have its time and it will have its moment but it will never fully create and it will never answer the need of the masses. I, don't, I honestly believe that. And what we're finding now, you see, is that so many people are, are demanding and expecting to have everything within a week. Of course, yes, especially... And yeah, and it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't exist, you see, um, within that way. And commercialism itself can sometimes open a doorway for people. 
because they can see something that they wouldn't normally have the opportunity to see and it can spark something within them. I mean, look at our wonderful churches. I mean, really when people go, many of the people go because they're searching for something, they see something and hear something. And then all of a sudden it, 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 it ignites something within them that feeds their need. Because really that, that, that is for me, the heart of spiritualism. It, it fulfills that need for seeking and searching. And so my only concern where that uh, exists is that if we are not careful and we may already be too late, that mankind is beginning to lose the naturalness of the power. Because so many people now are relying upon the great God of Google and of the pressing of the button to find the answers. Yes. That they're beginning to lose this naturalness of, of finding their way and, and, and of finding uh, their answers. There will always be a place for, for people who bring people together, but whether it will truly ignite the absolute passion, I doubt very much in, in my opinion but I've seen far, far too many people come and say, I saw this and this, and then they really want to seek to find and to unfold. Mm. And so everything has its place, but I certainly don't agree with the sensationalism. And, and I would say it, the rubbish that is portrayed to entertain, mm. because that does far more harm to something that is sacred Yes. Than anything else, you know, but, you know, what I find so heartening, you see, is um, it doesn't matter who someone is. Doesn't matter their the core of their belief. You can have the most wonderful conversations with them and you can see that there is a meeting point there where they need to know they're loved. They need to know that those that they loved are still with them. And, and, and so that's where the, you know, the university of spiritualism will, yes. will move forward and more forward, in my opinion. My last question to you, Colin, before we actually uh, give our audience the opportunity to ask you, and I'm sure everybody's absolutely uh, enthralled with the evening so far. Um, what, what, what is your thinking about the future of spiritualism um, within a few months? Hopefully we are going to be able to reopen our churches. Um, I think speaking to people within the movement as I do, the consensus seems to be that things are going to change. What, what, what are your views on that? Well, I think intrinsically they are going to change because I don't believe that there is any way that they cannot. But the core of the belief and the goodness itself is with the people. Yeah. And, you know, although we may not necessarily agree with this age of technology, it is an incredible way to still bring us together. And so I believe that that will continue. As we move forward in, into more of less restrictions, um, as I said earlier, I actually believe that there is going to be more of a resurgence because there's gonna be more and more of a need for people to know that those that they lost really tragically and bearing in mind, of course, at least 85% of those who have passed, they weren't allowed to see anybody. There was no goodbye. There was no final moment. There was no, I love you. There was no, I will see you again. There was nothing. There couldn't be, you see, because it wasn't possible. So from that aspect, you see, um, we need to stay strong within ourselves. We need to keep hope. And, and also we need to know that, yes, we may have to change things in some way. But it's so important to keep, to keep the core of our belief, to keep that love, and also to keep the availability for those that are seeking 
because really that's that's the way of it you know it's, it's helping people to find that which they need and that's really the ministry but you know, all of us in our own individual ways are ministers of the spirit. Because when you have God's love within your heart and you see someone who is in need, it is your compassion that rises and your love within that moment that takes you beyond however you may feel about yourself and you are able then to help them. Therefore, you are doing God's work on earth. So you're ministering to the people. And, and, you know, there is an army of ministers, of people with good hearts, you know, who are looking after each other and strengthening each other. And so the bedrock is, is strong and always will be strong, you know, but it may change. But, you know, I think the world is changing. And what is important within that statement is that we that we honour what we have, but also that we move with the times, that we don't stay stuck, because I don't believe that will work either. No. You know, um, we've gone, we've come so far, and we will, we will go further still, because I feel it in my heart, and 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 I've felt that all my life. You know, and one person. You know, just one person can address 10,000. And that's where technology will find its day. Absolutely. Because it's already happening, you see. Yes. Colin, thank you for the first part. Um, I'm sure that uh, you've, you've spurred a, quite a few of our uh, audience tonight to ask you questions. So I'm now going to hand you over uh, into Alf's uh, hands and uh, he will lead the questions from the audience. Thank you, Al. Thank you, David. Thank you, Colin. Always fascinating to listen to Colin speak about this subject. Uh, we've got questions already, but if you have questions or comments, I know we have quite a few mediums amongst our audience today. Do raise your hand so that we can put them to Colin and find out what he has to say. So first of all, I'd like to ask Minister Barry Oates to unmute his microphone and to uh, to speak, Barry, would you unmute your microphone, please? Good evening. There we are. Go ahead. You can hear me, all right? Absolutely. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Colin. As a working and teaching medium, do you actively encourage people to seek their own spirituality? Because yes. as you know. You well know that uh, you you cannot teach spirituality. No. You cannot read about it in a book, or you can read about it in a book, but you cannot read the instructions of how to become spiritual in no. a book. Because it's a way so of it's life. It's necessary you to encourage people to pursue yes. that path. Absolutely. So, what methods do you actually use? Well, to people to see, and as I said earlier, you know, every person that that you touch is an individual and that they have their own thoughts, their own ideas. And what we encourage is for them to unfold that, to find themselves within it. You know, look at the transformative journey, the healing journey. You know, through that, people are beginning to find their way. And, and really, absolutely, I totally agree with you. Um, you know, a teacher cannot teach, can't teach you anything, good Lord. What I can do is take you to the point of experience and say, now learn. And really it's the same, you know, with the spirit. What we can do is to help people uh, to find the road to their own peace. And I consider it to be the pathway to peace, whether it is through meditation, meditative practices, sitting within the quiet, you know, finding their, their own self within within the creator you know our own purse because it is really a personal relationship with god force mm -hmm. and so it is within that that we discover that we unfold but you can't give that to anybody all you can do is 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 nurture and and point the way and say you know now live 
Now live your life. Now unfold that which is within you. Because my goodness, we, we, we touch lives, but we touch lives so fleetingly. But the spoken word can stay with us forever. And so the words and the encouragement, you know, I have people talk to me from over 20 years ago and say the words that you said at that time and what unfolded for me has moved me and saved my life. So I think also we should look here about the inspiration of the creative force itself, of the spirit and how when we are in tune within that wonderful energy, we are inspired by it. I mean, look at the addresses that we give. It is an inspiration of the power. It shouldn't be the words of the medium. And so within such words, we are guiding, we are fulfilling the soul's need. And then as we are fulfilling the soul's need, we're helping people to find their own spirit. I often get the impression that um people think that you've got to be mediumistic in some form in order to develop spirituality oh not at all and we no, must no, discourage no. that idea yes do you agree not. with that i totally agree with that because as i said you know although you could say one is completely separate from another when the two come together you know there is such an outpouring of the love of the spirit but some of the greatest people I've known have never touched mediumship and yet their hearts have been so full of the spirit. And, and, and really this is why I say, you know, mediumship itself is, is yes, you could say it's giving a message and, and proving the continuation of life, but actually the greatest message is life itself. Truly, I mean, it is. And, and you know, not everybody wants to be a medium. Heavens, why would they? But what they want to be is that they want to be a living spirit on earth. And a lot of the people that we touch, you see, they don't necessarily go on to fulfill and to unfold mediumship, but they use the knowledge within their lives to go on and touch upon the spiritual aspects. And then through that, they're sharing their knowledge, their light, their love and their healing. So it's all awesome, really. And, and very few people, uh, honestly, very few people, um, go forward to the absolute blossoming of the mediumistic ability. Very few. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, lovely to speak to you. I'm going to now invite Ricky to, could you unmute your microphone and ask Colin your question? Thank you, Alf. Um, Colin, thank you for incredible uh, tear bringing um, speech. Um, but I have heard over time, and you have said so as well, that people who have experienced trauma or illness, somehow it brought or enhanced their uh, abilities, mediumistic abilities. Uh, I, I know it on a personal level, but excuse my ignorance, I have absolute no understanding of it, none whatsoever, but I did heard it over time. Um, that, that either illness or trauma would bring disabilities. Can you speak to that, please? Well, yes, I can. But I think what I normally what I normally say is that there is often a catalyst that creates the awakening or the desire. I mean, some of the desire is born, you see. And so some people are born with this inner awareness of the spirit. Some people go through um, go through trauma. I mean, that's well documented. People who've had accidents, you know, they all of a sudden they experience the spirit world. And then from that moment, this quest to understand it, near death experiences, for instance, it's very well known and very well documented. I think one of the greatest catalysts is when we lose somebody very dear to us. And then you, you seek to need to know that they are okay and 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 so there are many ways that, that this awakening comes into being and there is also no fixed time for that either because sometimes you know I've, I've known of people um come into this awareness and awakening a lady came to see me and she was in her 70s 
And then she just cried. And I said, well, why are you crying, my dear one? She said, because I've wasted 50 years of my life. I said, you've wasted 50 years. I said, what have you done in your life? She said, I got married. I had four children. I've been devoted to them. And I could have been doing this 50 years ago. And I said, don't you realize one of the greatest gifts you can ever give to another is to create the environment for another soul to flourish within this world. So time and what we spend within time is life, you see. And so there are many factors that involve the awakening. I mean, look at the spirit itself, you know, read, read the histories of the spirit. You know, the spirit appears and then all of a sudden the life is changed. So it doesn't have to be traumatic, um, but it can be. It's only one of many. Um, you know, what, what brought your interest into into the spirit, if I may ask, what what was that moment when you started your seeking? Oh my gosh. Um, so you see, and I'll probably guarantee you that it, you were going through something quite emotional. Yes, correct. Yeah, Th that very early in, 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 in my childhood, yes. Yes. So you see that, because, you know, what people don't always realize is that we're born with the blessing of the spirit and that before you and I came to this world, the spirit was with us, you see, you know, and it proves itself. Most wonderful medium, J.J. Morse, uh, he was a great automatic writer in his day. And he had this wonderful inspirer of the spirit called Ten Seng Te. And he was asked, did you choose your medium? And he said, no, I chose his mother. And so before the child was even born unto the world, the spirit were with them. And it's the same with your good self. And it's just that we're not so aware, you see, of the spirit and, and of that connection. But through life and the unfolding journey of life, we start to seek to find and always remember truly that which you are seeking is also seeking you. And, and, you know, I would go even further with this. And I would say, you know, at certain times within life, within moments, people come into our lives and they're like a signpost or something happens and it points the way and we are reminded because you see, it's the soul, it's the soul's gift. You know, it's not your desire to help mankind, although that's part of the compassion. It's, your, it's a facet of your soul that is already awoken to its divine heritage and is then manifesting itself within life, you see. Have I answered you? Yes, wonderful, thank you very much. Lovely to see you, my dear one. Thank you very much. Absolutely wonderful advice there, Colin, and I think something that we can all share in, in that. So thank you for asking that question, Ricky. That's really opened out a, a really interesting avenue of thought for all of us. I'm going to now to ask uh, Helena to unmute her microphone and to speak to Colin. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, hi, Colin, David and I. Hello, my dear one. Hi, um, I just wanted to actually go back on what you were saying in regards to Ricky and obviously I completely agree with yourself in regards to, you know, when people say... Um, Hang on, can you speak up a little bit? Um, great that's it. Step in. Obviously, sorry if I'm interference is a bit unstable here in the internet, okay. is obviously as children, you, you grow up having friends that are considered imaginary so obviously there is a fundamental where we teach kids to disregard what is quite natural around us yes then we've also got the side where we've got the presence of spirits where you could be in the depth of loss of some format yes. which would invoke the spirit in regards to seeking out something. It's like reaching out for God when yes. you are at your lowest. It's, it's completely what you were saying is what you're seeking is seeking you. And I do believe this is where the interconnection of God's so spirit will reach you is when you have felt that you've lost everything. 
that is when you see kind of gives you hope that they step in and that's beautiful embrace your life it is it's, it's, it, it, i want to say thank beautiful. you and i completely agree with you no no well thank, thank you. you um i I've think always had the beautiful spirit i think you see that, that this is such a you know such a wonderful point you know i know um within my own life um if if certain things hadn't have happened when they did um i don't know whether i would be here and and, yeah. and going through those doors even though i was only 16 um so brought such a transformation and i believe that sometimes that happens it's it's as if we're just guided in a certain way to find that which we need. And, and, you know, one thing that I am always very conscious of is that you cannot be where God is not because we are a part of the presence of that universal love. And I always say to people, you know, well, I've never known a time when God and the spirit have not been there, but I've known of many times when I have not. And it's also about realizing that sometimes we, you know, for, for, for whatever reason, you know, we are unable to embrace that simplicity. But my goodness, when we do, um, it's life, it, it's life changing, truly. Yes. Thank Beautiful. you, Helena, for that point. So really pertinent, I think, for, for many of us. Now, Colin, we have a, a question via the chat box now. And I, I know that uh, the things that you've been talking about today are covered in, in absolutely great depth and detail in the course that you were talking about at, at the beginning of this session, uh, oh, yeah. looking at spiritual development and mediumship. And I know before we, we start this session, you were saying that you've been teaching this course for 20 years at the Arthur Finley That's College. Great very popular and we're asked is it any different teaching this kind of thing to people online because obviously you know this past Ooh. 12 months we've had some great go. changes and I know you've been teaching a lot on zoom as well so mm. any thoughts on that Colin? Well you know I have to say if you'd have asked me this a year ago I would have given you a completely different answer to what I give you today but remember I spoke about this this wonderful phenomenon called non-local reality. And that is that we all exist within the same moment, regardless of time or space. And that what we find is that we are able to interact energetically in exactly the same way. I can't say that it is exactly the same because um, I'm a people person and I love interacting on a personal level with people. But I have to say that in, in doing it this way, um, it's been equally successful. And what I find fascinating, you see, is that the spirit work in exactly the same way, even though the person is perhaps somewhere else. And that proves the intelligence of the power itself. And that also that when we're teaching, I can tell what everybody's doing mentally. And I can also uh, become aware of the energy and where people are within what they're doing and what they're unfolding. And, and, and so it's been a learning, but it's also been something that we've been able to continue. And hopefully before much longer, we'll all have the in-person opportunities again, uh, because, Part of, the, part of that process of coming together, I think is a great sharing physically. And within that sharing physically, we are also able to, um, to achieve greatly. So I, I would say that we can do both. We can, we, we can do both. And, and also you see what we have to look at here, just as, as one last point, is that not everybody is fortunate enough to be able to travel, to go to such places. And, and, and that uh, for many people in the world, the cost is starting to become prohibitive. 
So what we are also beginning to, to offer is a way of bringing people together so they can still have that time and opportunity. And then we can still keep everything moving and, and, and flowing in its own way. And then when the time comes when we can all move and we can all come together, you know, but I mean, you'd be amazed at the places within the world that I speak to people. Um, uh, so, I mean, I can't tell you because my, my mind's not in gear anyway. And, but, but from every corner of the world and you would like Bali and, 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 and you know, and such people, it would cost them a fortune to come over to say hello. But then all of a sudden we have this wonderful gift here where it brings us all together from all the different parts of the world. And, and we can give them something that is called the spirit. And, and, and it works very well. Thank you, Colin. I think it's great for everyone to hear. And uh, from my experience, just being involved in, in one of your courses, it was great to see everybody so engaged and still being able to get that, mm. that college experience, but online. And I know everybody found it in, incredibly rewarding. Absolutely, with the lovely John Johnson. And yes, you know, absolutely. the mediumship and spiritual development, I, I have to give credit here because every year that I've done that, I've always done that with a lovely medium called Sandy Baker. And, and so it's always, everybody who works on that week is, is part of the week. So it's like a whole team that have worked together for so many years and, and brought this together. Lovely Lynn Probert, we have Mia Otterson, we have uh, lovely Bill Thompson. And, and so it, it's the people that create the moment. You know, you may have one person that helps to put it together, but it's also when people come together and, and such a joy is created that many wonderful things can happen. And, and I think that's what this time is really teaching us. Don't be isolated. If you have the opportunity of, of joining in and, and, and being, and we do so many lectures and, and, and all sorts of things which are available to just you know remind us and, and keep us going within this time. But also as well to, to, to remind us of, of the journey, you know, to remind us of the journey. And, and I think more, more than anything, if, if through what we learn and what we unfold and the sense of us all coming together is that we learn the reality of life and we learn that we are loved and that there is a power that is beyond anything that we can ever comprehend that loves us unconditionally and always will, then we can begin to spread that just by being who we are. Because mediumship is about life. It's not about death, there is no death. And really that's what people come for. They come to be reminded of that which they already know because as Barry so beautifully said, you can't teach anyone anything, but you can remind them. And you see, that's what prayer does. It reminds us, it refreshes the soul of its divine heritage. And as soon as we move into that prayerful moment, we are lifted beyond life and we know that we are loved. When we sit and we find the quiet, that is when we experience the love. So it's a wonderful journey, really. It is a beautiful journey, but it's not always an easy one. But always remember you're loved. That's the greatest, that's the greatest aspect of life. Always remember you are loved. Any last questions? Yes, we've got a quick oh, question, which is which is a comment and a question, and it relates to what Barry said earlier, mm. um, really about uh, that that we that, that, that our spiritual development is not purely the province of mediums. It's it's Absolutely for all of us. Not. But, but Colin, do you have any thoughts about how when we move on that spiritual journey ourselves as a recipient of mediumship does that change how we receive 
mediumship. Big question, but you've got a couple of minutes to have a go at it. Well, I think it does, you see, because it reminds us of the divine heritage of what we create. It reminds us of the sacredness of what we are creating. And the compassion element of the spirit will lift us beyond anything that we experience ourselves. You know, because so many people, they, they, they question their abilities, they question whether they're good enough, whether they can. But once you touch upon the essence of the spirit and the compassion of the spirit and, and the understanding of another person's need, you know, you're transported, you're uplifted and you're strengthened. And then you speak with the voice of compassion. You speak with the voice of the spirit. You know, healing, which is one of the greatest spiritual qualities of life, you know, in its truest sense, is the voice. It's the words that come. And who is to say where the origin of those words exist? You know, look at the ancient power of prophecy. It comes from the power itself. The power that knows all, loves all and understands all. And each one of us, you see, although we are unique, we are all part of that great, stupendous whole. And really, the, the mediumistic side, and because there's so many facets to the powers of the medium, you know, you've got prophecy, you've got seership, you've got second sight, you've got clairvoyant vision, you've got, you know, um, scrying, you've got all the ancient practices but one thing they all had in common was this belief within the creative force of the power itself. And call it what you will, for there are many pathways, but there is one great mystery of all life. The most wonderful saying that um, God breathed out and mankind was born. God breathed in and we began our stupendous journey back. And so really it's, it's about learning how to transform. I mean, it's not always an easy journey uh, because we tend to recognize qualities within ourselves, certainly of the past. And we've often faced emotionally with difficulties, but part of the healing processing is realizing that where we are now is what, what, not where we were and that the past is the past and has no power over us, only the power that we allow it to have. And so I, I would say that one complements the other. I mean, really, if you, if you look at the pure power of the spirit and, and if you look at the, the creative power of the spirit, um, the spiritual aspects and the spiritual way of life will always keep your feet firmly on the ground, but your heart in heaven. Because you will recognize the qualities of life. You'll never get carried away with yourself because you will always be within those moments of recognizing the sacredness of what you do. And when you bring those two together, there is no way that you will not reach the fruition and the blossoming of your own spirit because you're creating the environment for it to unfold. You see, we live in a, we live in a very sensitive world and, you know, we have many things to deal with on a sensitive level. I mean, look at the power of the empath, which is a, a natural product of sensitivity to people, to time, to places, to their thoughts, their energy, their anger, their emotion. And so we begin to realize that actually we are very sensitive within ourselves. So we, so as we move within those times of sensitivity, we also need to find where the grounding of the heart exists, where we can find those times of moments of bliss and of being. You see, you cannot be within the sensitivity of mediumship 24 seven. You cannot because it is not good. It can lead to emotional imbalance. It can lead to great problems. But you can be within the creative power of the spirit every second of your existence. The two are very different, as we have said. But together, they create this most wonderful journey 
that is called compassion and love. And also we begin to realize that everything that we need for this journey while we reside within the universe is already there. It's in here. It's a part of you and I. And so when we take time, you see, we begin to, um, we begin to acknowledge it and it becomes a way of life, a way of reverence. And that is something that is, is, is really beautiful. You cannot force, you cannot force mediumship anyway. You cannot force the spirit, it doesn't work. But you can nurture it, you see. And through love, it comes into being. And every single person has that love within them. And some people just need reminding for a time, this is who you are, embrace it, find your way, but know that you're loved within it. It's a wonderful subject, you see, really. And, and um, I've always had this belief of the duality and I've always followed it myself. And it's always been the way that I've teached. I've always been known as the nurturer and I will carry that with me to my last breath because I believe in nurturing people, in creating the opportunity for them to find themselves and then to experience what they experience and then decide, you know, decide where you wanna be, decide what you wanna do, but give yourself the time in which to do it. It's a wonderful life, it's a wonderful journey. We were meant to live glorious and we will live gloriously. And that's the presence of the spirit, you see. We may not meet again in this life, but we'll meet again at some point. And that's what I say to people, you see, because nowadays, once people know what you do, and especially with the college, you know, getting in a taxi and going from the airport saying, oh, you're one of those, are you? Prove it to me. You prove it to me that the spirit world exists and I just look very kindly and I smile and I say, well, I don't have to really, do I? And they look most affronted and say, well, why not? And I said, because I said, if you're right, it won't matter. And I said, if I'm right, well, then I can tell you and you can tell me that I was right. Think about it. So you don't have to argue anyway, do you? Don't argue with Colin. <laughs> We're out of time, Colin, I'm afraid. We? Uh, we, we, we've been beaten by the clock. So I'm going to hand back to David for his final words. Okay. Colin, I, I just can't thank you enough. It's been a wonderful evening. Thank you for sharing a little of your journey, your understanding. Yes. And, uh, you know, I'm sure everybody has been absolutely uh, engrossed in the words that you've shared with us. And uh, I think, mediumship as we've said needs needs to change um but we need to bring more of that spirituality into the experience of mediumship and through that reach people touch lives and the potential there is limitless so colin absolutely thanks for what you've done tonight and sharing your wisdom with us and god bless you for all that that's brilliant okay thank you all very much and it's so lovely to see so many people i know your fan club came, Colin. That was wonderful. Oh, well, take care, everyone. And just, well, we're always around somewhere. And, and just look after yourselves. Oh, See you soon. Can I just... Bye. Bye, David. Bye, Alf. Okay, Colin, Bye. obviously uh, did, got, got somewhere to go. Can I quickly uh, remind you uh, that next Monday at uh, 7 o'clock, as always, our guest will be Minister Barry Oates. Uh, Barry is a former vice president of the SNU but he has played such an important part in exploring the principles of spiritualism through the books that he's written and his latest book, uh, 21st Century Spiritualism, um, or the principles, uh, I've totally lost the title, but don't worry, we'll get it, we'll get it next week because Barry will tell me and keep me on message. Um, but I'm really looking forward to that and I'm sure uh, from experience, discussion of the principles is always well worth having, uh, because without doubt, it's the foundation of our religion. On the 15th, Monday the 15th, uh, I'm welcoming another college tutor, uh, Maureen Mernon, 
who is going to be talking us about, uh, about a slightly different aspect of spirituality and bringing the shamanic into it. I'd also like to tell you that um, we ended the second series um, a few months ago with um, a special on reincarnation. We felt very much that we hadn't really scratched the surface of the subject. And I know we had a, a big audience that were interested in, in sharing that. So we're, we're looking into April, we will be having another uh, evening of reincarnation with a slightly different mix of guests. And uh, that's a date for your diary. We'll give you those uh, confirmations as soon as everything is complete. We have run, we've run well over, but I think it was really worth it to listen to Colin. And thank you, Al, once again for sharing and for keeping all the technology together. And I look forward to seeing you next Monday at seven o'clock, where we're welcoming Minister Barry Oates. Wonderful. Thank you. thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining us. And we'll be placing this video on our Facebook page, which is at Spritches, the Spritches National Union. And we'll be placing it on our YouTube channel, which is SNU Film. We look forward to seeing you again. Keep up to date with our social media channels. Bye bye. Thanks, everyone.